Yes. Much that's better. It? That's that's much better. That's just the title slide, right? It is Silver Mining in Colonial Mexico. Okay. Sorry it took so long to get this worked out. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. What we're going to do in Mexico that produced silver for this for Spain during its colonial period, or remain while Spain had colonies in the U.S. in the North America. But first, we need to look at what they what was going on before they arrived. So, if we um, early twenty thousand to eighteen thousand B.C. of the Homo sapiens across the Alaska land bridge and moving down the west coast of the America. And uh, in Mexico, uh, there was evidence that were, there was a cult, there were men were cultivating fields and living in caves near Oaxaca, which is south of Mexico City. Terrace farming near Nuevas Casas Grandes, which is up in Chihuahua, happened by 1500 BC. And from 400 to 1200, the Olmec people ruled the southern Mexico and northern Central America. And in AD was considered the golden age of Mexico when arts were at its peak, the Mayan, Mayan civilizations well, developed sophisticated calendars and this kind of thing. Um, from 250 to 900 was the height of the Mayan empire in the Yucatan Peninsula and all the continent to the Pacific Ocean. Something drastically happened around 900 and the Mayans seem to have and left all of their build infrastructure actually were strong were the dominant group in that part in central Mexico. In pre-Cortez, pre the uh, minerals, minerals were crushed by hand using this kind of uh, weight and a grinding stone. And so smelting operations were small. But what they did had learned very quickly was that if you alloyed copper with silver, you could get it to melt lower lower temperatures. And how do you get higher temperatures in those that time of year, that time of of um, you need to add, they quickly learned you need to there. So it was done with blow pipes. Before the, at this point, the, the bellows wasn't really invented. Uh, the third slide C, a picture of C there is is called a work. Is a smelting furnace from the Altiplano in Peru. And what they did was use the downslope winds to supply extra oxygen for the, for the flames in the, in the uh, smelting process. Underground mining was very dangerous. So safety. They're called chicken ladders. We see them still in ancient parts old parts of operating mines in Mexico. They just consisted of a tree limb or a tree trunk that had notches climbed. These guys climbed these 
no safety gear. If you lost your and during the oh, feature all along the move no. Twenty-two, fourteen. Uh, Jim, we're having a lot of problems with um, hearing you. We can see the the slides okay, but the audio is not good. I get. Well armed, met up with the soon thing, Aboriginals way. Cortez was was. Appointed viceroy and it covered everything from Costa Rica to the Southwest United States. This border was defined on the north with the US by the Adams Honest Treaty. The formal name of that treaty is the Treaty. America coming world well, mostly or ab. Mexico for the world. Spanish in indicate that and if we look at metrics, they see Mexico North. And that's a general statement. What did I do with with Tosco, Guanajuato, Charcas, Fresno, Mapamina? Do is give you a quick look at a little bit of the history. Talk about a little bit of the main ore minerals and most important gang minerals, <clears throat> and show you um, some pictures of, of specimens, not necessarily just the silvers, but some of the other important things. This area. Tosco was the first. Started in 1522. The Sacavon de Rey, which was a deep tunnel to take water out of the workings. Asarco now owns the property, currently mining at about 3,000 tons a day. Main ore minerals were acanthite, galena, silver, ruby silvers. R important collecting minerals, rhodochrosite, calcite, fluorites. 
Stibnite. These all have, all of these slides have uh, the as much credit information as I know. So go through that with each slide. There's silvers. Nice wire silvers. Tosco also had some very nice pyrargyrites. Some incredible rhodochrosites that just think of these as micros on steroids, huh? Really nice bayerites. Pachuco, Monte and Moran are all the same area where they've been worked from. They, they were worked until they got abandoned in, in 1733 for a high water flow. High water flow is a problem in most of these deeper mines. Even though we have a desert climate at the surface, the water table is still the drain constructed in the diff. 140 years to production. And the most important development at Pachuca was the metallurgical process. Ruby silvers. Remember the smelting process. These original smelting was only done by amalgamation which is mixing mercury with native silver and native gold. Acanthite and the root kind of treatment because the mercury won't adhere, it won't form. Uh, gang minerals, again, uh, Pachuco, Rotocrosite, Rodenite. Uh, that uh, Pachuco is very hard to come by these days, for sure. The largest crystal on this here is a centimeter across. And we have a um, stephanite which is a little over a centimeter. And micros. Now, as I was saying, we're native, so they extracted those by information. Then and re amalgamate the name. The to uh, So the complex just simple rock these days. Dina, the time developed a 
convert these so that they could be amalgamated. It was cold process and required little fuel and a few reagents, but mercury was critical. It was late. It could be um, process. Adios, if it's you. And this is the, uh, uh, and uh, all those flasks, real flasks, are mercury. The Pachuca process for the Pachuca mixed, mixed with the mercury was mixed with the with the with the amalgam was put in a container and heated and the mercury came out the bottom into containers and the what was left was the gold and silver bullion with the mercury on it probably because it, it, they never burned it all the way off. The process, the, the ore was mined and transmitted they beneficiated what we would call a mill smelter complex. Pebble size by hand labor, and then placed on the six or 700 tons were placed and then on a patio, a flat surface. Here they mix salt, lime, and mahistral, which was copper sulfate. It's let, it got to stand for several days and cook. But then they brought in mules, horses, and men to mix the pile from this 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 continued to break up and and uh, expose new surfaces to the mahistral. Salt and the mahistral were added and reacted in the in, oh, it it could take up to five weeks to for the mercury to amalgamate with this material but it's better than not having anything at all. Then they removed the amalgam from the material and smelted it the same way they did. And this is the transport picture of transporting the bullion to Mexico City from Pachuco. was what the Spaniards knew about it in fifth, as early as 1529. The Vetta was the first vein discovered and probably the most productive in the district. Labor problems have in Guanajuato district they still are a problem. They are good. Very com some of these are much more complex silver minerals. There's a little bit of native silver. Interesting thing in Guanajuato when you drive around all of the thoroughfares main thoroughfares are under the city in tunnels. So you just pop up here and there. It's really hard to get your bearings in where you're going in the tunnels if you're not used to it. And it, I never got used to it. Six. And this is how, this is one of the early hoist mechanisms. These ropes, where the wheel gets turned by them, the ropes go out over a
the Valenciana shaft is the is it was started in 1554 Valenciana deep shaft is the way in and out of this was they had no hoist it was the miners would walk on those chicken ladders they were kind of what they did was put us a, a uh, timber out from the wall and then another one like a staircase but there was no railings no boards no not just you just had the timbers that you walked down up and down and the miners would carry the sacks of ore up and down those timbers. And again, if you fell, you just went to the bottom, probably unsuccessfully. Um, this is a polybasite from from Guanajuato, an aguilarite with calcite. Canthite, another canthite, another canthites are were fairly easy to find and still are from Onawato. Pink quartz with some three. Francis, the water problems have been. Mexico line. There's New York and New York property to the English Mexican Corporation. Pinola 75 and the rest. And the discovery outcrop was the top of the silver and acanthite were the two main minerals. Calcite. This is a perargite from Zneo. Romero's collection. Uh, this is a polybasite, again from Fresno. Right from Fresno. Oh, There's a native silver. This was offered on 18th of June, 2013. Site. Charcus had earlier production was pretty small. The and silver with silver grades were quite high, up to fifteen hundred grams for. Again, with a canthite, silver, ruby silvers, gang minerals, danbright. Datalite are two of the most common. The pink clear danbrites are very nice. This is a clear white. This is a nephantovite. This is a, the typical poker chip calcite from Charcas. These are, there's been a, quite a few of these around on the market in, in many collections. 
on the chart is important over to the, to the miners because up is the what's called the Quinto Real, the King's Fifth, which was the tax on precious metals out of New Spain, was governed by the amount of mercury they used the process. So if the miners found cinnabar and could convert it to mercury from the crown, less taxes on the production that they had. Item. Santu Lalio. In 1593 and as were, has in, in continuous production, still good specimens are coming. The West Camp, which is um, Shaft and, and other things, and the East Camp, which is San Antonio Mine. Uh, Central Alia exceeded 500 million ounces of silver before 1790, sorry. Again, the, the, the main silver minerals, also other nice, <coughs> nice, Hemimorphites, nematites, wolfenites, phthalorites. And from the scarn zone, ildites, rhodochrosites, Hedenberg. This is 450 million ounces of silver were produced from 1703 to 2001, mostly out of the West Camp, which this is the There are a few wire silvers, but they're very small. Notice field of view for this is only one centimeter. So these are micros. Also a Proustite from the 10th level of Potosi mine. Again, in the collection, 1.2 millimeters. A canthite from the Bellardania. Then there's Mapami. We all know Mapami for its extraordinary, well, mostly the secondary in oxalide minerals. You notice in Spanish, you know, the stained out. It operated until the revolution in 1810, and the property was under the German control. It had 216 miners who got a hundred thousand dollars a month in the 90s, which was fabulous money. I didn't convert that to today's. I didn't convert that to today's dollars, but there's 450 kilometers of workings. Acanthi, Galena, most of the silver in Map of me is associated with the Galena. And other silver minerals on their own. The list of secondary and oxide minerals is incredible. Minerals like mopamite, oelite. And some other arsenates. Edge with the Boca de Mesa down on the cliff as a dark spot. 
below. And at this point, this was the town of Ojuela. Roebling built this, Roebling Engineering Company built this suspension bridge. Early history of well, me. This is what it looked like in 19, in 2001. Almost all of the housing from the city of Hawaii is gone. Galenas, these came out a few years ago it's with native silver wires. And so this would, this galena would probably have up to four or five percent weight percent silver. And so the mine was mined for Galena, but with a bunch of silver credits. There, there is still a small, some small operations going on for Galena now. Oh, conic calcite is one of the more common secondary minerals. Of course, adamite, green, brilliant green, the pink adamites, and the adamite balls, lagrandite. Wolfenite on mimetite, another. These are starting to look like the sandwich wolfenites in the middle. We've done some analysis work on that and it seems to be a manganese oxide of some sort that's in there, maybe mixed with, maybe mixed with, um, Most of the wolfenites are orange to yellowish. Bogopilus is a very interesting place. I worked there for Peter for about four years. The house got discovered in 1630 and it had several periods of operation until Alexander Shepard the former governor of Washington, D.C., and a friend of, he was a friend of the Mexican president. He took over the district and actually bought some claims down there and started out operations and was fairly, very successful. His son attempted to revive the district late following the revolution, but could find no interest in financial institutions. The district produced 300 million ounces of silver. And Shepard's direct shipping ore was 250 ounces per, per ton. The mill grade was eight and a half ounce, eight, eight and a half ounces per ton. One of uh, Pilos is a very different system. There's lots of native silver. 90% of the production was from native silver, maybe even 95. Site are all there. Fine. Um, there's calcite and quartz, mostly. There are some zeolites. is very similar to what they call five element vein systems. Here's a silver. Okay. 
This is the typical native silver herringbone spinel twin crystals in calcite veins. These are veins. This was a picture of the Hacienda de San Miguel in 1880 when Shepherd was there. It's also now called Shepherd. And this is, this was in 1936. You can see that they've built much more, many more buildings than Merck. The smelter was over in here. The gold room was, or the silver depository, I think was five. And the housing for the, in this area. And this is what it looked like in 2002 when I got there. Just to show this is one month's bullion shipment. Steps of the, in the, in the Hacienda, each bar weighs 25 kilos and a mule could carry two bars. Grant Shepherd wrote a very nice book about his life in Pilos in 1938, the name of the Silver Magnet. Lots of crystal, silver crystals, again, being etched out of oh, calcite. We we tried mine deta uh, min uh, metal detectors underground at Watapilas and had little success because I think they didn't produce far enough far into the wall rock. NICA started as a small scale mining and it has no water um, or any of that kind of thing. Fresnillo acquired the property in 1954 and expanded the plant to 2,000 to 3,000 tons a day. NICA was closed about a year and a half ago because they couldn't deal with the hot water problems. It's NICA is one of those deposits like Santillalia, Mapami. There are carbonate replacement deposits where the ore fluids actually replaced limestone. So you end up with sulfides in scar and mineralization. Uh, NICA is known for galenous valerite, fluorite, little, some nice boronites. Um, probably the most important or the well, most well-known gang mineral is the selenites, because this is where the cave of the giants is in the cave of the swords. This is a pyrite after pyrotite. And in the, in the development of these systems, this, this association, this occurrence is very important because it tells us that the speed the um, very long lived uh, the pyrite forming after pyrotite is a slow reaction so in order to get large amounts of pyrite after pyrotite and large crystals takes a lot of time which means the system evolved over quite a bit of time This is a fluorite. This is a, another fluorite. And probably most common are the green fluorites on black sphalerites. 
also anhydrates. A lot of most of the anhydrates you see come from NICA. This is a quick show of the of a diagrammatic cross section of NICA. The the um, it was discovered on by surface outcrops of these veins, very manganese stained. And this this thing this diagram shows the water drawdown. This being the current or the water table at the time the mine was closed, for as to the original water table, which was the table normally arises under hills. So um, so the, with the selenite. There's a ramp that goes to the 700 and some odd level. We were in but we're about the giants. So This is a picture of on the 700 level. See, it's almost a my hairline contact between the limestone and the sulfides with a very, very small alteration halo. Down here we have mixed massive sulfides and and scarring mineralization, Hedenbergites and Ilvites, those kind of things, garnet scarns. And these things move along the plains of, 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 and just molecularly replace in to out as they, they just replace the limestone. This will. As you can see, this is it went around this block of limes. This block of of fairly unaltered limestone. The mineralization has gone around it because it had no there was no fracture. And all it takes is a hairline fracture. was the last district discovered by a French company. The majority of the production was from copper. The puzzle is strange. It's bedded in vo gypsum volcanics on the, on the Baja Peninsula. Cobalt successful because of the metallurgical problems with the cobalt. But the most important for collectors are the boleites, comingites, anglosites, and some of the atacamites. There's boleites and comingites on boleites. So, and with that, if Pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. This is not it. This is the silver pot at the other end of the rainbow. As the Fresneo mine is now working on a project that is new and extension in Juan Scipio vein, 9% by mag silver will be in production. Is in, is in production now, but development and full production. So the continuing story of silver in Mexico. Thanks.
Thanks, Jim. Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, sorry. I, I, my, my brain doesn't work as fast after. Uh, no, your, brain, your brain was fine. The, the, the breakup yeah. of the sound was the. <laughs> well, maybe I need to get a headset instead of just doing this across the table thing. That's uh, okay. It it, it, um, it it was hard to follow at times, but fortunately you had plenty of text there to yeah. for us to get yeah. the gist of it. Good. But yeah, the, the audio was was um, certainly not ideal. Um, okay. but Sorry that, about that. That's just uh, a well, that goes. technical problem that sometimes happens. So it's, um, a, it's a brilliant talk, though. I, yeah, I didn't realise all about the, the oh. tonnage of silver and the minerals associated oh. and um, the photographs. I mean, it was, it's a real eye opener to me, Jim. It really is. I thought it was be and beautiful. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah. It's a metal edge yeah. behind what, what the natives did. It's good. Yeah. Well, if it my friend Peter McGaugh in Mexico for 10 years, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Uh, are there any questions of Jim? No? Just wished I'd been there. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Because Newquay, where I lived, because we had uh, lead and silver mining. <laughs> And some of that was in the 1500s. But of course, the output was so tiny, we hardly mentioned in literature at all. So just to, just to see these sort of outputs and, and those bars of 25 kilograms of silver, oh, oh. you know, it's, it's, uh, we've got a historic mention of a, um, a block of silver at the local pub in Crantop waiting to be transferred. And I don't suppose that was 25 kilograms. No, it's a plate of silver. That was it. That's because it's something in the 1800s, and um, but uh, it, you know that's uh, nothing like the the pictures that Jim showed. It's just stunning. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I I did have one question, Jim. Um, we we lost a bit of the audio when you were talking about the uh, the wolf nuts. The I think you said there's manganese. Uh, no, thought, no. But we we missed the bit after you said the word manganese. Oh, uh, yeah, there, I've tried to, I can get sides and so I can't come, I haven't been able to discriminate specific minerals yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, um, any other questions? Uh, just, just jolly good. All right, thank you very much, Jim. And very good. Um, we'll see you all in two weeks' time. Yeah. For stacking. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Very good, Jim. Very good. Yeah. yeah. And thanks to Mr. Belson for reminding me. <laughs> I, could, I, I had the time wrong, of course, because I'm left-handed. My brain doesn't work like anyone else's. <laughs> yeah, we know that, Sheila. We know that. We go back, you go forward, so that's okay. Yeah, it was only one person like me. <laughs> yeah, no, it was oh, really God. very interesting, that was. Yeah. Why don't I get all those minerals in Nuki? <laughs> oh, that'd be Why fantastic. Yeah, a couple of states, Stateside, we're going to daylight, or going off daylight savings before the next meeting, yeah. so our start time will change. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. It takes me three weeks to get back to normal. Last night I was awake at two o'clock, so I got up till five, went back to bed. Oh, got up again. Oh, I hate, I hate it when they change the clocks. Yeah. Yeah. Before we all sign off, I want to introduce a friend of mine that was from California that's into rare minerals and micromelanin. I don't know. <laughs> Behind me here, oh, yeah. we, we missed the name, Jim. Yeah, Bruce Murphy. Bruce, hello, Hi. Bruce. Welcome. Jolly good. Yeah. Very good. All right. Good talk, Jim. Uh, see you all. Okay. Later. Thank you. Weeks, yeah. A couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Good, Jim. Bye. 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 Bye.